Welcome to another Encounters episode. Today we take a look at werewolf reports from Ohio. These reports started in August of 1972. There were at least three separate reports made to the police of people being attacked. These attacks took place between 1 a.m. and 4.30 a.m. The witnesses described the attacker as wearing some kind of an animal head or a wolfman mask. Police Chief Donald Breckler said, We didn't release it to the newspapers when we got the first report about a week ago, but now we're taking it seriously. We're concerned for the safety of our people. The sightings continued with reports of a wolfman or a very hairy creature. One witness just called it a beast. It was further described as having hairy feet and standing six to eight feet tall. Many insist that the creature was a werewolf and that it clearly was not human and was very aggressive. The police took a more practical approach and decided that the attacks were most likely made by a person wearing an animal mask. The creature was never captured and the case was eventually closed. Resurrection Cemetery in Delphos was once the home for real-life werewolves. Ken Gordon, a resident of the area. When I was a kid, we used to have church campouts along the Auglaise River next to the cemetery, and the priest would tell some pretty wild stories about werewolves in the area. In 1981 to 1982, Keith and Diane Williams had their own experiences with a creature near London. They moved into a house in a wooded area. Keith not only was working but was also taking night classes. This left Diane and their four-year-old daughter Raven alone most evenings. One night, Diane looked out the window and noticed two eyes staring at her from the darkness. She dismissed it as a probable stray dog and continued into another room. That was when she realized that the eyes were now outside the window in this room. It could not be a stray dog as the eyes were at her eye level. With her husband due home, she quickly pulled all the drapes shut. When Keith got home, Diane immediately told him of her experience. He checked out the yard and found nothing unusual. He dismissed her story as her being nervous about being left alone at night. Diane continued to see these eyes watching her at night. Several months later, Keith had his own experience. While waking in the early morning, he decided he wanted donuts for breakfast. He quickly got ready and jumped into his car to drive to the store. Looking in his rearview mirror, he saw two eyes staring at him. In central Ohio, near Columbus, a truck driver named Scott saw something unusual. It was on August 27, 2005, when he reported his strange nighttime sighting. In his truck headlights, he could see some kind of large creature crouched at the side of the road apparently eating a deer. He described it as a cross between an ape with a dog's head and the werewolf creature from the movie Van Helsing. In May 2006, Joe saw a very large creature at night while heading home from his job in Middlefield. He was driving through an isolated and wooded area when his high beams shone upon a creature near the side of the road on all fours. It was about six feet long from its head to its rump, not counting its bushy tail. Joe said it was a silver gray and had penetrating eyes. The Norton area has had many sightings through the years. In the autumn of 2013, Andrew had two encounters with strange, bipedal creatures. His first experience occurred while he was driving down the Johnson Road, bordering the Silver Creek Metro Park. He quickly stopped when two deer ran across the road in front of his car. I would place them somewhere between 6 feet 6 inches and 7 foot tall. They chased the two deer, which were both smaller, out across the street and into the woods. They ran in formation one in front, two behind, kind of next to each other. They were roughly 30 to 40 yards behind the deer. They were bipedal, very muscular and fast. Lightning fast. It all happened in just a few seconds. I couldn't describe any features, unfortunately. I'm assuming it was either a new moon or cloudy because it was very dark, but they were definitely a dark color, maybe a chocolate brown or a black color. When asked if it were possible the creatures may have been Sasquatch, he replied, they say that Bigfoot has long arms that swing when it runs, and it runs like a human. Whatever these were, they weren't Bigfoot. I can't describe how they moved, but they didn't move like a person. Less than a month later, Andrew had yet another experience while heading home. 
This time the creatures ran out in front of his car. The fields had full grown cornstalks. But I don't know the exact heights only that the cornstalks were taller than me by a head, and I'm six feet tall. This time, my sighting of two creatures was a quick flash, because there was no open land to it. They basically leaped the road as they broke the corn and landed about 10 to 15 feet into the field on the other side, and kept running. This time, the pair that I saw in the moonlight, the first was black and the second was black with white or silver on its chest and back. Since the first three I saw were all a solid color, that means there must be at least four different creatures. A long time ago timber wolves were common in Ohio. They began to be considered nuisances as more settlers came to the area. The wolves were hunted and trapped to total removal. It is estimated that the last wolf was killed in 1842. Here are some explanations given for the possible werewolf sightings. 1. It is possible that the earliest stories came from actual wolves in the area long ago. 2. One researcher says it could have come from the Native American tradition of shapeshifting. Perhaps local shiny shamans were able to transform themselves into wolf form. 3. Another researcher suggests the early pioneers may have come into contact with Sasquatch. They called them werewolves because it was the only reference they had to describe them. 4. And, of course, there is the researcher who says perhaps they were actual werewolves. Find more reports and our sightings map at thecryptocrew.com. If you have had a sighting or encounter, then please contact us via our website. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time.